Welcome to this session. Our first speaker is uh, Ling Chen. Ling Chen is currently a PhD student in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and Sustainable Manufacturing at City University of Hong Kong. She obtained her bachelor degree in process equipment and control engineering in 2019 from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. During her undergraduate studies, she has been a visiting student at National University of Singapore and a research intern at University of California, Los Angeles. Ling Chen has won many awards such as Hong Kong Tech 300 Seed Fund, UCLA CSST Award, and a Bao Steel Excellent Student Scholarship, which was awarded only to top 1% of students of her cohort. Today, she's going to present us uh, her exciting research about nature-inspired fork harvesting system for power generation and the fresh water production. Hello, everyone. I'm Ling Chen from City University of Hong Kong, and my supervisors are Stephen Wang and Zhuang Kai Wang. And today, I'd like to share with you a completely new energy solution, a fork-powered generator. We all know that moisture resources is everywhere around us in the air. And it's estimated that the moisture resources in the world is equivalent to around 5.2 billion Olympic-sized pools that are full of water. And especially in local coastal regions, like in Hong Kong or in Singapore, the annual mean relative humidity could be as high as 80%. And in some special time in mountainous or coastal regions, the humidity can even go up to 95 or 100%. Today, some scientists and engineers have tried to harvest the fresh water from the fork, but almost no one have tried to utilize the fork to generate electricity. And one day we just found that when the fork condenses on the meshes and drops down, there should be energy stored in the dropping water. So why don't we just harvest it? So we designed this fork powered generator systems and we coupled a droplet energy generator with the fork harvester to harvest the fresh water and electricity at the same time. And the electricity could be further used to power the IoT devices like electronics, sensors, or smart illuminations. And this is the first prototype. The fork flows through the fork harvester and condenses on the superhydrophobic meshes. And then the droplets will slide down and impinges the surface of the droplet energy generator to generate electricity. And the electricity will be used to lighten the LEDs or power the IoT devices. And finally, the fresh water will be collected in the reservoir. And later, I will introduce you from the two sides for harvesting and power generation. Well, the meshes are the most common structures that are used in the world to harvest fork because they have high efficiency and very low cost. And we made some modifications on the meshes that are inspired by nature. For example, the fibers are inspired by the spider waves and the artificial tapers are inspired by the cactus spine. And they both improve the for harvesting efficiency and we also apply some chemical coatings to make it super hydrophobic that is inspired by the waterproof lotus leaf so it can has can have the anti-fouling and self-cleaning functions and you can see that the because there are tapers microstructures on the meshes, so the tiny fork droplets can condense very quickly and easily on the meshes, and the droplets can also transport directionally. And you can also observe there are three comparisons between the conventional plate and the meshes for harvester and our specially treated harvesters. And uh, you should observe that the water droplets detaches very quickly uh, on our specially treated meshes. And when there's contaminations, it can also very fastly clean it. And compar comparing with the other 
uh, conventional for harvesters. Our nature inspired, inspired for harvesters has three times higher efficiency than the other ones. And you might be very curious about how we could transform the water to electricity. Well, uh, you should know the tribal electrification phenomenon, which is happens in our daily life. When you uh, rub two different materials like the glass and the fur, then they will have opposite charges on it. And when you are in a dry environment and your body is easily to have charges and you can feel that when you touch other things. So when the water droplets um, drops down in the air, then it will have frictions with air. And when it impacts with the surface, the collisions will make it to have a large amount of charges. So that's uh, that's how we make use of the um, it the tribal electrification phenomenon to generate electricity from the dropping water, and this is the droplet energy generator that we designed, and its structure is made of the electrode, a PTFE film, and the ITO film. And when the droplet impinges on the PTFE film, it will be electrified to have the negative uh, charges, and the ITO will be uh, induced to have the positive charges. And we collect the ITO with the electrode, and when the droplet is sprayed to contact with the electrode, then the whole circuit will be closed, and the current will be produced, and we can have electricity through this way. And this is the performance of only one droplet. And you can see that it can generate electricity up to 200 volts. And we have conducted experiments in around a month, and it shows very outstanding electric reliability. And we also upgraded our prototypes and successfully demonstrated in our lab laboratory. And it, it successfully lightened the LED lights. And except for this, we can also collect the droplet energy generator with the rectifier and capacitor to store its energies and for further use, like to power the calculator or power the sensors. And hearing of this completely new tech list, the Hong Kong government department EMSD reaches us to uh, help us to ask us to help them uh, make a large scale droplet energy generator. And it made up of 100, 100 DEGs and now it is placed in the fountains in front of the uh, EMSD buildings. And we also scaled up our prototype and and the change it is over structures to semicircle to optimize its aerodynamics efficiency. And in the future, we aim to um, do more trials uh, at the Hong Kong Island or the Taimau Mountain, etc., to provide fresh water and electricity for the Hong Kong local citizens. And those trials are supported by the multiple Hong Kong government department. And finally, we anticipate that our fork power system has multiple applications. For example, for now, there are more than 50 billion IoT devices are collected in the world. But if such devices like sensors or electronics are put in like remote areas or harsh environments, it might be impossible for human beings to go to those places to recharge or replace the batteries. And and it might cause very serious environmental problems. But if we can couple our full power system with such IoT devices, then it could sustainably provide uh, power for the IoT device. And that's all for today's talk. Thank you very much for your kind listening. This talk now is open for questions from the floor. So if you have questions, please type in the chat box and raise your question. But before we have the questions from the audience, maybe I can first start with some questions. So I'm a chemical engineer by training. So I listened to your talk. I heard this uh, word of um, condensation. When I 
hear condensation, I feel very anxious because for condensation, we uh, refer it to uh, vapor condensed to the droplet liquid. And there's a huge latent heat being released. So can you clarify whether the fog um, condensed to the uh, water droplet, is this a condensation process or it's just a collection of water droplet? Um, uh, thank you. And um, well, in in our uh, in our research, I, I think because we use the meshes and have spatial microstructures, um, uh, and it's mainly and it's mainly is that the small very small tiny fog droplets and they combine and they collapse on the structures and they combine and grow up into the uh, water drops. And I think that's not the condensation process. So it's there's no phase change. Basically, yes. you collect. Okay, thanks for the clarification. So now the questions uh, are from the audience. So the first question is uh, from Clemens. Are there electricity generation generator uh, pricey? Are the electricity generation pricey or costly? Do you need many resources to produce them? Um. Um. That's good. That's a good question. Actually, uh, our generator is very, very cheap because it only uh, uh, consists uh, consists of uh, uh, like I O T glasses or a metal substrate or a PTFE film, uh, and those materials or or the copper or the coppers, and those materials are very cheap. Actually, the uh, cost it only cost uh, around um, less than three Hong Kong dollars for one piece. Okay, so that, cheap. that's cheap. Thank you. The second question um, is, Dr. Chen Ling, may the application be extended to atmospheric water harvesting? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so the short answer is yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess we have one more. Uh, we have time for one more question. Um, wondering whether your device can be used in Africa region to generate electricity at night, and at daytime the water collection can use to can be used to generate electricity or used for clean uh, drinking water. Um. Uh, well, actually, uh, uh, previously we are the, um we are researching uh the high. Uh, harvesting fog in very high uh, humidity environment, but for now we also consider about harvesting uh, the moisture in the low humidity environment using like the other absorbent. Also, it's anticipated that uh, in the future uh, we might also harvest the fresh water in the daytime and use that the water to generate electricity using our droplet energy generator. And right. So it yeah. even works in Africa, where yeah, the, yeah. The, because, the moisture is not very high in the atmosphere. Uh, uh, yes, actually, for now, uh, we're developing a material that can harvest uh, uh, moisture that uh, in uh, in humidity that as low as around forty percent. Okay, so, so that could sounds, work. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, we do have time for a very uh, short question. Last question. So there's this question from audience, how long we can continuously power the IoT devices or do you have uh, any power storage in your system? Um, uh, well, uh, I mean, the first, okay, could you repeat that, sorry? How long uh, you can continuously power the IoT devices? Oh, how long, well, yeah, do you need the storage device? Um, yeah, actually, we need we need them for now. Uh, for now, we use a um a circuit that we tra uh that we transform the electricity then generated by the generator and store that in a capacitor, and then we uh, then we use the energy from the, the capacitors to power the IoT devices. Uh, and we are yeah we are trying to solve this problem and trying to uh power to try to power the devices directly. That's lots of for now because because um, it the one droplet because the the power generation process is a lot of continuous process. So we need to store the energy first. 
Okay. Um, although we have more or less reached the time limit, but there's a burning question. This is also something that I want to know. Do you expect the need for huge amount of land to deploy your technology? This is coming from Singapore, where the land space is a very limited resource. Um, actually, I think this is the advantage of our uh, generator because we can uh, design a multi-stage generator. I mean, um, we can uh, we can use droplets that uh, repeat repetitively, and we can put the and uh, we can put the generator in multi stages, and that can save a lot of space. And we and 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 we can uh, couple our device uh, with different like different uh, buildings. We can put that on the rooftop of the buildings or in the uh, mountains. And we can design different uh, prototypes and use that. So it, it's it's not really uh, lead to have large space. Okay, thank you very much for answering all the questions. Thank have you. a nice day. Thank you.